to the Rad EDC gear that I carry, once again, every day. And a lot of this stuff is going to be focusing on cool things like cool pens, lighters, flashlights, pry bars, all the cool stuff that we EDC that isn't really a knife, isn't really a gun. And I wanted to make a dedicated kind of segment talking about this stuff because I still carry it, still really enjoy it. And there's a lot of other gear out there worth talking about that isn't dedicated to knives, cutlery, guns, firearms, firearms, accessories, stuff like that. So without any further ado, guys, please don't forget to comment, like, share, subscribe, check out the Patreon and ring the notification bell if you want to see more awesome content dedicated to EDC tools like this. Okay, so because I have it in my hand, let's talk about pens. So for me, this month I am going, I'm pretty much carrying exclusively the Ultimate Survival Gear USG. Um, I'm trying to remember, they call this, I believe, the Tie Bolt, even though this one is made out of brass, as you guys can probably tell. This is technically the Tie Bolt uh, design. Now, this one's an earlier generation. I picked this one up for a pretty good price, and that's probably one of my favorite things is scouring the Facebook and different other groups and forums for cool maybe older gear but definitely used and still totally functional stuff like this so like i said this one's a generation two i believe they're on like three or four now and the newer ones have kind of a uh, button click at the top as opposed to just having this little cap but um still completely cool completely fun and completely functional it's a nice little bolt action bolt actions aren't my favorite to be honest as far as pens go but one thing i will say that i really like about the usg design whether you get this older version or the newer versions is I really do like how the clip is built into or screwed into the bolt and why I like that as far as this goes is the fact that um, when it comes down to it when it comes down to it um, what's really nice about this is when you put this in your pocket unlike a lot of other click pens or other bolt actions because the clip is the bolt or they're one in the same they're kind of uh, bolted together they function together so if this is sitting in your pocket that clip can't accidentally get depressed and moved over so essentially there's never going to be a point where that pen is opened up and just uh, open in your pen or open in your pocket so I've had that happen with my other uh, big idea designs tie click pen which I'll probably feature in another episode of this series but uh yeah i really do like that feature on this one and it is a really smooth bolt action all things considered so that is my first kind of piece of kit or tool up on the list okay next one up is also something not super new but probably will be replaced pretty soon and that is the phoenix ld30 now the ld30 is probably one of my favorite flashlights as a whole because of its super compact size but yet super high outlet super high output and i think phoenix is one of the older flashlight brands but really overlooked in the community because i think some of their newer designs like the ld30 and uh, some of their others that i will be mentioning in other episodes don't want to give it away or other future videos like this um have even higher output than this guy still being you know really handheld really pocket sized and that's the thing this thing has a max output of 1600 lumens and so it's certainly not you know mind-blowingly bright but for the fact that this is hand sized easily pocket sized or pocket carryable and the fact that it has such a high output really is pretty awesome and this guy sees a lot of use especially nowadays that's starting to get darker and uh yeah really just an awesome flashlight and i do really recommend the ld30 it is cool about the only thing i dislike about the ld30 is its clip and you can see that i've kind of uh, customized it because originally it came with one of those old school clips that was kind of like a dual loop where it bent down like this and then looped back up so you could like put on the brim of a hat or something like that and the idea is really cool but what was ending up happening to me was that out, outside loop would get caught on things and then bent out pretty severely so I after bending it back a few times I decided to actually just cut it off so that I would just have a more standard normal clip not perfect but it does work Okay, another one that's really cool and is a little bit newer for me is pry bars. I'm definitely going to be talking a lot more about titanium pry bars and steel 
pry bars on this EDC tool kind of uh, video format. And this one that you're looking at right now is a Meritac or Countycom Widgie bar. And this little guy is pretty neat. Um, it's This one is their four inch version. And these guys started life as a D2, uh, or sorry, D9 tool steel. You can also get some of them in titanium, but because these guys are no longer made, I was able to get this on like a kind of clearance where they were selling them in bundles. So they were packaging them as like four inch, three inch, two inch, and selling them off like five at a time. So I got a pretty good deal on this guy overall, but what I think is really cool about this guy is that. So it started off life as a D9 kind of tool steel. Now what I did to this guy to customize it, because this isn't quite factory of how it comes, is first thing I did is I roughed up the steel. They kind of come stone washed. So I took some sandpaper, undid the finish on this guy, and then I force blued it. So it is now blued. That's why it kind of looks all weathered and dark and probably why the camera is struggling to pick it up because it is pretty dark. But but I blued it, blew the steel so that it would be more rust resistant. And then what I did was through this little eyelet, so they kind of have this miniature nail uh, puller here. So you would potentially put nails through there and like pull them up. It's not necessarily the most functional, especially on a really small piece of pry bar like this. Probably wouldn't work super well, but anyways. So I took the paracord through there, basically did a, a cobra weave all the way down the bar and then finished with the little lanyard loop. So what I did was really just wanted to give myself some extra traction, some extra width, because these pry bars, as you can see, are probably only about half inch wide by about an eighth of an inch thick. So they are pretty small, pretty thin little tools. And that makes them really nice to carry, but sometimes kind of hard to hold on to. So I think that paracord really helps with the width. And of course the traction, you get a lot more traction with the uh, paracord on there. And then of course I just finished it off with a nice little snake, uh, snake loop or snake knot, I should say lanyard to help get that full kind of four finger, five finger grip on the little pry bar. So this one, of course, I don't know if I mentioned it, can't remember, but uh, this is a four inch model. And uh, yeah, that's what I did to mine. And I really like it. I'm pretty happy with how it turned out overall. I did try to color theme it after my Spyderco Paramilitary 2, because I thought that would be fun with the blaze orange and OD green. But uh, yeah, it can go well with just about anything. Okay, last one up on the list is going to be the lighter. Okay, next one up on the list is going to be the lighter. This is a Zippo, and this is just one of my old school, uh, old fashioned Zippos that is a satin. Uh, this one I've had, I think, since 2012. Yeah, this one's very old, but very cool. And Zippos are one of my favorite EDC tools and actually pretty high on my EDC list for things that I don't leave home without because they are so handy and so versatile for starting fires. And, you know, they may not have the most, uh, like the highest degree of functionality. Like some of these other tools are kind of like multi-tools, but the lighter really helps you start fires in a pinch. And for me, that is something that is super important and super valuable, especially living in Alaska. Okay, last one up on the list, and we can't talk about multi-tools without actually talking about a real multi-tool, and that is the Leatherman Skeletool. Now, this is a top-owed version of the Skeletool, and I'll have more videos to come on this guy, but I thought that this one would make it into the list for rad tools for the month. And this guy has been pretty fun to carry. I haven't been carrying it all the time because I do still like the little bit larger um, Leatherman Charge Plus. It's pretty hard to get this out of my pocket, but honestly, the uh, Skeletool isn't too bad, especially if I'm looking for a tool that is really just like, if I just want the pliers, which oftentimes, Really, I just want the pliers and a multi-tool. The blade itself is kind of, um, it's nice to have as a secondary, but most of the time I'm carrying either a fixed blade or a folder that's going to be more than sufficient for a knife. So oftentimes just having those pliers and having a good set of pliers in case I need them is very handy. The other thing I like about the uh, Skeletool is it's very driver oriented. So you can see that it has a nice, like, especially if you kind of collapse it, it's a very nice long arm for your driver. And this one just so happens to be a double-sided um, Phillips. So you have a larger Phillips on this side, smaller Phillips on this side. And, uh, and that is what I'm running for this guy. Then of course, as my secondary, I have a slotted 
or an eighth of an inch um, flathead screwdriver. Hopefully you guys can see that. And then I have a, I wanna say, is it a T10 or is it a T15? Wow, I'm way off on that one. Torx bit on that side. So I have a little bit of a mixture of things um, and things that I would practically use for the kind of screwdriver aspect of the Skeletool. So really versatile. Um, once again, like the Skeletool doesn't have a whole lot of functionality to it. I believe it has like seven functions and like three out of the seven functions are just in the uh, plier head where they sa say like one functions needle nose, one functions plier, one functions like the wire cutters and another is like the hardened wire cutters. So like a lot of the functions are just the pliers, but in a tool like this where I do have a dedicated knife, I don't think it's as big of a deal because I really am just looking for the pliers. Anyways, that is the last tool wrapping up some rad tools for this month. As always, guys, God bless and I'm out.